But I had a call from my doctor one day, and he said, how are you feeling? This is after I recovered, and I said, good. He said, are you sure? And I said, <laughs> now I'm not feeling so good. What, what's the call? He said, well, I just checked your Lyme uh, titers on the urine engine test, and he said, put it this way, uh, uh, positive is 32, high is 45, and you're at 304. <laughs> so he never saw one. He's literally seen thousands of these tests and never saw any quite that high. So I had this issue. I, you see I had the herpes virus 7, a herpes, uh, uh, herpes human virus number 8, cytomegalovirus, Epstein-Barr virus. I was positive for all of them. Cytomegalovirus and herpes, herpes, herpes 7, 6, 7, and 8 are also indicative of cancers. So uh, I realized that, okay, I had a problem. Now we went to the immune cells, uh, a little bit, and you can see that the, um, the CD56 are the natural killer cells, and uh, I had high levels of natural killer cells, and then you look at function, and my natural killer cell to lymph ratios were okay. Now the lytic units, here's where it comes up. Lytic units is down there, you see it's 75. The range is 20 to 250. 250 is like where you want to be. Um, at least 150 is where you ought to expect to be. Not surprisingly, I was 75. What I found astounding was that most Americans that have lytic unit tests done are below 50, even when they don't have cancer. So it's a walking time bomb out there. That's why people are rushing to get flu vaccines, but it's not going to help because those don't help natural killer cell function. Natural killer cell function comes from feeding the immune system and getting rid of the stuff that suppresses the immune system, not from vaccines. There are certain vaccines I would have suggested cancer that are made out of your own body tissues, which augment immunity by educating immunity. We're talking about, again, communication. Um, CD4s, you can see where I was, where I was um, the asterisk, absolute CD5s, absolute CD4s, low numbers. So I was immunologically suppressed, as one would expect. So the question was now what to do. You know, you got all this stuff, and how do you, you know, where do you go with a flossing machine? I say, you go where the big boys were. Were, not are. They're not there anymore. You go back what they did, Merck, one of the largest drug companies in the world. I did a, I did a patent research on Merck, and uh, Merck was a serum producer, and I knew this because I was using serums for cattle. And um, lo and behold, Merck was developing patents, or developing products to have patented for um, Every disease known to man that they had at the time. Polio, diphtheria, smallpox, you name it. It was, in, it was listed as a, as a component in the patent application. Um, and what they were going to do, they were going to take these organisms, hyperimmunize a cow, a dairy cow, and then harvest the colostrum and then make a serum out of it. And I said, I can do that. Not exactly. So what I did was I took my blood, which is what? It's an antigen. I mean, I just showed you what was in my blood. I got all these critters, you know, floating around in there having a party. And so I said, okay, I'm going to use my blood, whole blood as, a, as an antigen. So I, I drew out 10 milliliters of my blood weekly. I, I leased a cow from an Amish dairy farmer who was completely perplexed about what I was about to do to his, one of his top Holsteins. And I assured him everything was okay, but he was so intrigued and, uh, and it was a good business deal for him because I did all the work. Um, and I said, just, I'm going to come down here once a week. You're going to see me come in here with a blood tube. I'm going to infuse that cow with my blood, and she'll be fine. He said, are you sure? I said, she'll be fine. No problem. And it was, it was the case. I did that once a week for the entire dry period, the entire gestation, the last eight weeks of the gestation, which is about eight weeks. Infuse that, that blood up in that cow, 10 milliliters, not injected. Infuse it up in the teat with a blunt tip on the end of the syringe. I drew the blood out in the syringe, removed the needle, put a blunt cannula tip on there, squirted it up the cow's teat. That's what I did. Well, <clears throat> I harvested that milk, and I started, I froze that milk, and I made a, uh, a yogurt out of it. And I made this hyperimmune yogurt. This is exactly what was going on, in effect, with this, this whole uh, Merck patent. And I was advised by some people that I knew were doing this Repstein-Barr virus that I should stand back and wait for the Herxheimer's. You know what Herxheimer's is? Herxheimer's is a, is a flu-like effect that you get when the immune system starts killing off all these critters. They, they die so quickly and in such mass that they fill you up with their debris and you get basically a fever, chills, and you burn it off. And boy, did I get a Herxheimer's. It flattened me in about five days. And I knew it, so I was okay, knew what was going. And about three days later, I was fine. And boy, did I kick ass after that. And the only thing, 
The only thing that was uh, a concern to me and then the Amish farmer was whether or not that cow would have an appetite for pizza instead of grass.